Tonight, we dive into the deadly fentanyl crisis plaguing our nation. Our Dave Wagner is in Studio B to show you the severity of the threat. I'm going to shake just a few grains of salt onto the table right here. It is so small, you probably can't even see them. But picture this is fentanyl. It is so deadly, just three little grains of it can cause an overdose. The entire salt shaker could take out the entire city of Venice, or Haines City, or Tarpon Springs. The DEA has called fentanyl the single deadliest drug threat our nation has ever encountered. Local leaders call the number of people dying from the drug an epidemic. It's why we've spent almost a year now looking at the problem facing our community. Now there have been epidemics related to opioids in the black community historically, but this dramatic increase is, is, is shocking and striking and puzzling. Laws in place in hopes to stop it. Unless we prosecute, they're just gonna keep doing it. And possible solutions like the legalization of fentanyl test strips. It would be a great tool to have for people who are using drugs, but then it would give them that chance to get clean and to turn their life around. It hopes to curb the number of overdoses. But the latest data we've obtained shows those numbers continue to rise. We're continuing to push for answers to give you a sharper insight and to hold the powerful accountable. 10 Investigates Jennifer Titus headed to the busiest trade port where she sat down exclusively with Customs and Border Protection to give you a sharper insight on what's being done to stop the drug from coming across the U.S.-Mexico border and into our community. We have been faced with the frightening challenge of fentanyl. You got to start thinking about how does that get into our state. It's flowing over the border, it's coming from Mexico, it's going up to Atlanta, and it's, that's the route and it's coming down here to Florida and it's killing people every day. If it's not secure, this is not going to stop and more people are going to die. That five kilos is capable of killing everyone in that many counties. I completely support Attorney General Moody's call to declare fentanyl a weapon of mass destruction. In July alone, we saw a record amount of fentanyl seized at our southern border. Here on U.S. soil, you can see smoke in the distance from a warehouse fire in Mexico. But on the other side of the Rio Grande River is the town of 300,000 people. We're primarily 95% uh, Hispanic. Who call. Alleluia. The bulk of our people are also faith-based and Catholics. Laredo, Texas home. What are we looking at here? Where are we at in Laredo right now? Okay, this is what we call a Jarvis Plaza. We're in, in, in downtown Laredo. Mayor Peter Sines was born and raised here. And nuestra historia is, is, is nuestro poder. Our, our story is our power. Many locals have never left. What makes uh, Laredo so, uh, so important too uh, for the nation and for our state of Texas is, is the fact that we're the number one land port. Uh, about two years ago or so, we were the, the overall number one port in the nation. In, in, in terms of trade. They welcome the onflow of trains, trucks, cars, and even walkers heading over the bridge from Mexico. The Rio Grande is just 200 feet wide between Laredo, Texas and Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. The river doesn't divide us, it really connects us. It's what makes this town unique. Is that a big part of the economy here? It is. It's our primary engine. Uh, Laredo does 60% uh, of, of, of Mexico's trade uh, just through our port with Texas, about 40% uh, trade with, with the U.S. and Mexico. But what isn't unique is that this town of 300,000. Are you guys seeing that right here in Laredo? Is it staying we're in the seeing, community? We're seeing more and more. Is battling the same problem. Compared to last year, uh, 
We've had 150 overdoses, uh, uh, more so than, than, than last year. As many other cities across the country. Fentanyl is, is very real, as, as we hear from, from other parts of the, of the country. Uh, we see it as, here as well. It, it's got to be stopped, uh, and, and the key is, is the border. Fentanyl is making its way from China to Mexico and moved across the border into the U.S. That's why 10 Investigates headed eight miles north from downtown Laredo to the World Trade Bridge. Where are we at right here? Right now you're in the pre-primary area of World Trade Bridge cargo facility. On that side you have Mexico, and this is where all the tractor trailers are actually arriving to the United States. Where we met exclusively with Border Patrol officers. 10,000 trucks daily crossing from Laredo, Texas. So the only thing separating us right now and Mexico is that bridge right there. Correct. They are the ones in charge of the shipments coming in. On a typical day, you'll see the, the bridge half full or full. And keeping narcotics like fentanyl out. We've seen all types of drugs here in Laredo. Um, as far as how their concealment, it's we've seen it on um, in tires, in the equipment itself, the uh, floor, ceilings, the commodity. Uh, recently, we had one with uh, broccoli. In just the past few months, the Laredo field office area, which is comprised of eight ports of entry from Brownsville to Del Rio, seized enough fentanyl, nearly 100 pounds, that could kill everyone in the state of Florida. The latest data obtained by 10 Investigate shows five times as much fentanyl has been seized by Border Patrol in 2022 than in 2019. Nationwide, we're still seeing a record number of overdoses. So is enough being done to stop this drug from coming into the communities? So I do know that the uh, CVP is investing a lot of money in technology uh, just here at World Trade Bridge. The assistant port director. It's a fast uh, scan. Okay. They don't have to get down from their vehicle. What they do is they just, it's a drive through Says the brand new technology here at the World Trade Bridge is a multi-energy portal machine. When it comes to drugs, fentanyl, how does the technology help detect that more now than with the old? Okay, this new technology is high energy. So when the driver passes through our MEP, the low dosage of energy is on the driver, which is something that's safe for them. The high energy goes in for the track for the trailer itself. We have shipments of machinery. Machinery crosses through here. It's number one inland port. So for steel items, we need something that can penetrate the steel so we can look inside. Refrigerated uh, frozen commodities is another one. So this high energy, we can actually see what's inside. Problem is. There's only one of these machines in Laredo. One other is in Brownsville, Texas. There are 50 crossings along the Mexico-U.S. border. Back at the World Trade Bridge, where there's one machine, there's 15 lanes truckers can drive through. Laredo is one of the test beds for testing uh, future NI equipment. The next phase for us is to have four additional machines, but at the pre-primary area. But that takes time. Something like this could take more than a year. But again, we're continuing to see the drug into the community. So is solutions being put in place fast enough? Well, it, we, we have to have that balance. Uh, again, the, uh, the time it takes to install them, the, the flow of traffic, uh, the officers that are out there trying to look for the narcotics and, and other, other tools that we have. Uh, it goes hand in hand. Uh, you got to place them there and it's going to take some time. Would you say you guys need more resources? We'll down never here? say no. Of course, uh, more resources we have, the better for everybody, not just CBP, but for the whole community. Uh, the more people we have, the more technology we have, that'll help us a lot in trying to de deter more of the uh, smuggling through, through our ports of entry. Because once it makes it across the border, so I got up around six and I went to his bedroom upstairs and he didn't answer the door. It can make its way to Tampa Bay in just 19 hours. A few months later, I found out that the heroin had been laced with fentanyl. And it's in the hands of your loved ones. 
nobody should have to bury a child. Yeah, it was really an interesting and such an eye-opening experience to see that they really have to find this balance on something that doesn't slow down the trade, but also a way to make sure that these narcotics stay out of the U.S. I think they have found that with these machines and eventually hope to have 100% of the trucks scanned with this technology. But unfortunately, Dave, it is going to take time. You have reported a lot on the efforts around here to crack down on fentanyl, but unfortunately in the Tampa Bay area, we are facing a record number of overdoses. Yeah, and unfortunately, Dave, it is not a quick fix. Right now, you can head over to 10tampabay.com slash overdose, where you will find a digital exclusive as we sit down with the DEA here locally to find out exactly what is being done once the fentanyl does make it into our community.